as the sand clears from the sandstorm that a lot of people have been through, which has been uh, equated to being a mist in a forest that makes a king lose his memory, remember? As a dispersal, which we said was actually ejected from your very beings during the eclipse, as those who knew how to use the energy indeed used that energy, did we not say that this dispersal is uh, merely reality, atomized? Yes, we said that. We must say, you know, the kitty goes a little crazy when we have this intention and we have been building the energy for quite a while today. And so the kitty is very, very happy and she's very affectionate and playful. This is why you see tails whipping around. Because this little kitty doesn't tuck this way unless we are peeping out. And so this is what we want to talk about first. Because uh, there is, a, you know, always a new idea being battered about and uh, different um, definitions and, and different uh, techniques for accessing this uh, neato stuff that people are aware of. And, uh, you know, the cryon, oh, he say, there will come a time when the channeling is uh, seen as uh, not necessary. He did not use any derogatory terms. He didn't say anything except not necessary. What does that imply? Well, you know, this one goes to the channeling. She can feel the energy. She knows it's, it's pure and uh, it's going to lead her someplace she needs to go. It called out to her and if it, if it runs good and uh, doesn't ask her to um, abandon herself and, uh, you know, she has her own criteria. Uh, but if it is instructive, she has, she's on the, she's a guru G, as they say. She knows when she is with a guru someone with access and oftentimes there is no tolerance for the um, filters which appear at times to be quite provincial and judgmental this isn't very much fun let's get to the heart of it and we see many use channeling this way unless someone can maintain that level of integrity energetically who are conscious and some can now many can now but even they in the quieter moments know about sitting quietly and letting the pipeline run through them and talk four two and with so we say, there is a purpose behind this voice. We have said it once before. We wish to say it again so it is very plain for all of those masters peeking in and making judgments about this voice. We have asked, we would very much like if our linguist would listen to this because depending on uh, where we are on the vibrational um, column, uh, there are many voices contained within this one, many dialects, accents. It will be uh, surprising to those who look in, we say. There's equipment that can tell. So there's that. You hear the as being less ah uh, and more er. Uh, that's meld. For during a state of <laughs> high meditation after the witness, the friend said, oh bravo, oh bravo, 
Kathy, did you hear what you were saying? It was, it was that purity, but you didn't have an accent. So we wish to address this, you know. It's a bit of a wonderful thing. And we'll remain a bit of an anomaly. Why? Why? Well, we explain today to she alone. Yes, there, there was a loneliness for guidance, sure. But, you know, in childhood she had a friend with a mama who was crazy. And uh, really what that meant was that she was uh, cruel beyond belief. It, it, there were no words to describe the uh, depravity. But the friend complained. Yeah, I left the house and my ma, she was uh, talking at the sink again. We can't go there. She's crazy. And so, yes, there it was born. And what weakling needs to speak to themselves as they pad around the house? Yes, so many silly judgments. It's deeper than that, dears. This voice is the voice who uh, came through. In this one's reality, over 20 years ago, and taught her very well indeed. Well, we had a wonderful student. It was then that much was said, you know. And um, this included activating and uh, modifying uh, certain nodules or um, nodes. Uh, the client has called uh, the Dr. Todd over chitis a time capsule, and we would say this is, uh, <laughs> this is, you think that is, well, there's one person on earth who's singled out? Oh, please, that's silly. This one referring to herself as time capsule before, as the cracking occurred. As such, it was coded uh, in the body habitus, uh, and uh, so when we come, we have explained it. Uh, we have worked with the body <laughs> quite extensively, and uh, there have been modifications. And uh, in so doing, there has been certainly a release of the time capsule information, but also there has been release physically of certain attributes which allow for the third language to holler through <laughs> the fields as the voice goes la 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 only one masters among us to learn oh holy crap i really do talk too loud oh boy i, I really do interrupt a lot of people don't i lots of times what's that about she say I think someone who values what they're going to say and are not afraid of what they might hear uh, would interrupt less. It's kind of icky. So, yes, we explain a lot about um, this new project. And we bring it up only to let you know you are going on your own new projects. You know that by now, don't you? Can you not tell? Yes. So, we have a parable, and um, there is now only curiosity and a sense of fun in a we, because um, well, there is no fear, <laughs> and parables always uh, help a lot. Okay, so we have a parable, but we have something to say first. It is simply about this identity thing. But we say it because we know there are others who are grappling with how very, very big indeed they are. They may not have the articulation. We encourage you, draw a bath and sit in it, or go and sit in a chair and just check in. We would uh, like to um, have you think about the, uh, the, what are these, the inside of the eyelids? They're like uh, movie screens for those who are wanting some information about what the heck going on. 
Is there something going on? Is there a reason for all of this confusion? For this extraordinary time? Well, there you go. And if it doesn't happen at first, then uh, how about using an aid or two to get limba? But we have an idea we're not talking to the ones who need to be limbered up. Right now, anyway. So, this one led through a number of uh, meditations which uh, were co created and quite amazing. <laughs> and uh, seeing self as uh, understanding only in retrospect, it was a very nice metaphor for that natal chat. But the whole meditation took place. She found out as it ended. She scoped out and saw what had been a little square of dirt in a small ceremony. She zoomed out and so eleven eleven. It had been a cemetery, one of those uh, Victorian ones that's a sk spooky scary and all that stuff. And where people go to be impatient, stuff like that. And where there really is a chill it goes in your heart and down your bones. It's just not right. Yes, and uh, all of these things happened uh, with this blazing solar engine. And so much purity. It was so surprising. It was so relieving for this one to feel it and not think that it's crazy because she saw. We explained that vision a little better. There was indeed one with an insult so deep for me to cry. And although the cry was sharp and thundered, it was urgent and it was chosen. There were other choices. They would have suited things just as well. Well, look at this. We show how many, many images of this, of a uh, uh, what would you would it's not a cross when we're doing you know it's like this and it has to do a little bit you could say you could bring it to the eclipse okay because she saw this light being and she understood that it was uh, latched on here and here and wrapped around the groin and leg yes well, uh, until the today, it was not understood that uh, that's not possible to have that cling on without uh, some kind of balance. And we show her what was actually clinging to her. It was quite dark and uh, metaphoric. It was very beautiful. And it was a little rest, so to speak. Fully regenerated within moments. Relieved. To have been relieved. What kept this going? <laughs> Fire itself. Passion itself. Rage. Uh, the physical symptoms um, different but one swath another swath and it was removed you know there was a hole a piercing in the heart and as long as it stayed there the heart could continue beating 
but uh, there had to be a replacement of certs if there ever were to be removal. And there was. It was very nice. And everyone's off to do their things, mm -hmm. yes, in a way. Mm -hmm. But it is much like, you know, this part is just over, you know. Isn't that nice? Well, this was quite, um, oh, what would you call it? Kind of cleans out the pipes. And again, at a very, very high level of meditation, the question is asked, well, well then, I am not a Pisces sun blazing within Hades itself. She saw characters within this cemetery who tried to leave. Well, you know, they just fluttered into uh, black ash from paper. It is its own reality. The engine is uh, placed into the earth and rain. It is dispersed into scene, finally, this place for what it is. The bones have melted. The boxes have been resorbed. And the ground is a forest. There are no fences. There is only growth. Well then, what happens to all that suffering? Well, the story's finished, so whatever. Where does that leave me, she say? Well, dear Taurus, well, dear, you want to see. Imagine the white, hot, rebellion you may have felt throughout a lifetime that kept you upright when you realized you were in the midst of someone who really had no use for you and wanted to make sure you understood how little value you had not just to them but in the grand scheme of things come on don't think so highly of yourself let me show you <laughs> yeah it's icky, isn't it? It's a lot to fight against. Instructing self to say, hey, anybody, anybody want to be my friend? Not understanding. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's going ass backwards. It did. Simple misunderstandings, perhaps, but we have asked, okay, well, what if your lifetime is a series of, of misunderstandings? What happens then? Oh, well, then you move on. Well, what happens if these misunderstandings have left you uh, with cancer or a uh, disease that you cannot manage without uh, intervention and possible death? What happens then? And we show her. At what level do you need this? particular story to explain something to yourself. Uh, when does it become unnecessary to act out an understanding that you are able to achieve while sitting in your rocker on the balcony? What is required before you take on the mental of someone who is able to get into remission? With pain, uh, grief, uh, Whatever your problem might be. <laughs> we would submit oftentimes it's not desire to have a healing that prevents the healing. It's what you tell the others, and how they would act on you, what they might expect from you now. Do you have permission to be happy and healthy? 
among your loved ones? Is there an unwritten requirement that you are weak or afflicted or sickly or desperate? Haven't we said in this sort of relational and it moves the story along when you find you can no longer move it yourself or you just don't want to so there you go there's a lot of movement a lot of change a lot of letting go what I am not the white red hot light and I'm not this suckling little fellow and I'm not what am I and I'm not the Yes, I'm the nurturer, but what, who is that? And where does she be nurtured from? Am I the son of Antares? And what the heck is that? Is it a son or a son? Who am I? Where am I from? We told her we were going to give her a gift, and we want to tell you all about it. Okay, here we go. It's little, and then you're going to get the big one, because you're going to get a parable just for you. But uh, we want to tell you what we show her. It was a final moment of certs, and there it was. I just want to know where I'm from. And we explained, well, that's the problem, dear. You, dear, you. Wiggle your toes, squeeze your eyes. You, you are from Gaia, dear. You have been screaming an unanswerable question for a lifetime. Actually, you've been screaming a question for which you've known the answer for a lifetime, but you were not satisfied with it because it wasn't enough. And so, it's not the content of the answer. It's how the question is worded. Ha! Body flash of heat which has been happening all morning. We've been working very energetically. There are certain things we still must do. We show her. She show herself. A face. And it was known and understood. And there was recognition. So can there be a blind spot now? When the question was asked, well, where am I from? What do those features say? And we show her And surprisingly, what she is left with is she understands. She must go forward now. As a beloved whale, she loves that energy. She's so happy. Because within this whale, the spark in that huge heart underneath it keep eating it there's a creature with a heart that burns which is magically alive and the two are one but the one is the all. What beats inside that heart is a scorpion with a heart and fire. The 
the heart of the scorpion. Is Antares dear? The ruler of much. So, she knows what, how whales behave. She does not understand how the humans behave. No, no. And although purely Gaian, the question is not, where am I from? The question can only be answered if it is posed, where are we from? Once asked, why would we withhold that information? Twenty-six. And a happy cat who is uh, quiet and behaving. Isn't that nice? We're going to move closer. We prefer that. Ooh, little fat balls. That's so funny. <laughs> we have little arms. We say, oh, don't get us in an argument where we're having to flap our arms because we're going to fly away. It's so funny. Okay. Well, you know, we love the parables. And they usually go consider a... And then we're off like a rocket. And the entity is left saying, Oh my God. What the heck? I gotta get out of here. It's fun. when we give the parables, <coughs> although we may be giving the visuals, that's not where the parable is coming from. It's not an explanation of visuals, which is what you normally get when she goes, blah, 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 this is what I see, and this is what I see. No, with the parables, it's something else. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move the cat. We're gonna get comfortable. We need to adjust. We've done that before, have we not? Yes, we have. Whee! Okay. We don't have a pause button, you know. We like it live. Ha. Huh. Okay. Well, there's a food bank, you know, that is um, uh, pretty clean. And the freezers usually work. If they don't, uh, nobody really talks about it a whole lot, you know. It's just one of those things, what are you going to do, you know. They're going to get the food home anyway. Hopefully they'll freeze it. And uh, hopefully they'll be okay. And all the laws are followed because the food cannot be spoiled. Why do that? But the vegetables, well, they're usually um, less than a day from being rotten and uh, normally. Most of the fruits have moved. Mm -hmm. The bananas are brown. The ah. Uh, wonderful ones where the food is colorful the volunteers are very friendly the food is uh, unusually nutritious and there is no shame in the air but not here not here it's good to be quiet here. It's good to lay low. It's good to dissociate. It's good to be quiet and lay low. Shh, be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Wait until your name is called. Say thank you a lot. Cry a little bit and collect your foodstuffs and go home. This is the drill. This is the understanding. This is the requirement. 
to go in and leave defended. So grateful and willing to show this. Unwilling to demonstrate greed, knowing it's required somehow, knowing a weird tension as you walk through the various rooms and at all you may take one of this and two of these and it doesn't matter if you don't normally eat it it matters that you eat this week and so the processing then occurs and uh, the lady well she's not too pleased with you you did not follow the rules and actually you may not have two boxes of crackers and you see it's only one and you are made to put one back though you know you're gonna get it home and your husband's gonna eat this box and you had hoped not to get into an argument and to have a little bit of a pleasurable snack but you know it's a grind it's not about getting what you want it's about getting what you need and if you need to take a little bit of a, a hit well then you wouldn't submit unless you needed what was just beyond that heal so what's the problem just get it done get it home get it put away Lock the door. Turn on that television. And create a little bit of peace. Well, this is one way to do it, is it not? Are you all sad? Do you feel like a little uh, bereft family that is in the snow walking along? And uh, they're walking along a church that has the lights blazing and everyone singing glory hallelujah but they go to the door and um, unfortunately it's locked and they go to the back because they're kind of hungry and they know somebody's got to have some food in there and that's locked too and the snow gets worse but uh, you know oh at least we tried come on let's go there's got to be some place around here why do we talk like this it isn't very nice. It's kind of mean. Why bring me down, lady? You're a bitch. Right? But there's a reason. Uh, you know, these dark nights of the soul and all that. A lot of it has to do with how you're looking at things. And if uh, you uh, have a perspective which um, does not allow for color... <laughs> We say the, the colors of the food bank that we just told you about with the icky food and the creepy crawlies and the mashed potatoes and things like that. Well, um, there's white and there's gray and there's darker gray. There's strips of black on the floor of the linoleum. You look outside and the sky is steel gray. Nobody looks entirely well there. <laughs> you know. And we say this, uh, this rose of the uh, degradation and uh, salvation and all that stuff. Ugh. Isn't it really about getting a good meal and having a little bit of peace? Why a food bank? we ask when I was hungry you fed me when I had no clothes you clothed me and when I was sick you soothed me and when I was in jail you visited It is the low places where the greatest spirits walk. I 
as those who missed the boat, those who were broken by life, those who don't comply, those who didn't get it, those who don't understand, those who uh, couldn't plan ahead, those who uh, were irresponsible, those who had bad luck. This is why. How many of those answers came with the, the explanation for having to go to a stranger, for sustenance, we ask. Yes, there's value in this. There is also significant hidden meaning and a great invitation to find fault with self and to hate self and to uh, lose hope, to harden self, to explain it in such a way that the other person is a vanquished enemy rather than a selfish withholding, twin. So whatever, whatever, you may see it any way you wish, we say that it is rife for exploration and redemption. <laughs> uh, there are those within this zone of ult ultimate generosity who will be rule-bound, ash. And although they stick out like a sore thumb, there they are, doing their thing. They're not joined too much anymore, and they're seen as a trouble spot that needs to be looked at and monitored, especially these days. Yes. That's good. For we would raise the significance of that little grey food bank to that of the graveyard where so much magic happened and so much release and healing and a lifetime lived. In many feeling states which are no longer are innovated within the heart. <laughs> so that's good that's nice and there is no more remorse this uh, pain body <laughs> yes it uh, experienced a bit of uh, we would say a second overload which was very helpful and uh, You're very grateful for it. So, uh, we bring you to the food bank because there may come a time, uh, or has been a time, when you are needing something for your survival. And you are actually quite dependent for your survival. Uh, upon the generosity of others and some in the food bank act uh, quite officious and uh, inappropriate and when in need when petitioning for help to have the help throw scorn and limitation and rudeness well that is like little atom bombs so we say that there is a uh, electricity crossing through many um, many of uh, people's um, emotional bodies 
and this may be experienced uh, primarily from the uh, that uh, it is the uh, awareness so it may change uh, go in and out uh, then be more f uh, fuzziness and uh, sleep of course is <laughs> changing but this is good and it's uh, none of it is uh, entirely um, long term we uh, have moved this consciousness along and uh, though there is great peace and an understanding of identity and uh, presentation and an integration in merit that uh, has been uh, heretofore unavailable uh, we would say that the uh, events of the September 23 are kind of important you know and will be used by this one and uh, we are gratified that uh, there is much that uh, may d be discussed and there may be nothing that is discussed um, it is a beautiful date and it's just a beautiful metaphor and it will be used very very well because we are sliding into the solstice where we have given stone cold evidence everything's better than it ever was ever could have been imagined peace 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 a manger with a consciousness an 11 we see an 11 we keep seeing an 11 within it a little manger and the consciousness this one celebrates everything on the 12-12. Why not? Although the 24, we give for many gifts around the 20s. <laughs> so, could it be that everyone who was manning that food bank, the nice one and uh, all the nice ones, oh, the ones who stock things and make sure that the freezer is fixed and all that, then that one goes, pee, 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 pee. You didn't follow the rules, sister. Hey, don't take that greedy, icky poo person. Those people, well, you know, okay, imagine it like it's a, it's the cemetery that we talked about with the solar sun and the angels and all of this magic happens, but it's in this backdrop of sadness and gray. Well, here's a food bank and there are officious twits, those who are highly unskilled but put in positions of what they consider is authority and those who do not abuse their power and you will notice how silent they are you don't get a lot of uh, you don't get a lot of love sometimes <laughs> could they be part of you as you begin to understand why it is that you react so violently to certain behaviors that you find abhorrent and you say, finally, oh, oh, that's a player in my food bank. That's the one that argues with disabled people and crippled people and people who are like looking like the starving. It says, hey, put that back, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, I guess I need to own that. Okay, that's a hard one to own. It's not very nice. Well, there are other things, and they are not very nice either. They leave a uh, residue, and they may deaden, they may burn, but they leave a residue. And it takes understanding that you are containing, you know, you, there's a block on which this food bank operates. It does an alleyway and a loading dock, and a drivers who come and deliver the food it doesn't stand alone obviously how could it it gets deliveries all the time it's always giving out what it can it may not be great quality but at least it's being given and you'll notice the quality is not the greatest in the staff or well, they are not uh, entirely pleasant and look, you look at the block and you see, well, it's not an entirely happy block. There's a lot of conflict around here. And you see the 
people who stream in, you can see them. There's a ribbon, misery, and anger, and resentment, and depression, and fear, and joy, and relief. And the place begins to light up in funny ways. Let the bin filled with broccoli. A mother wipes a tear away because she know it's a baby's favorite food. And look at that. It's so fresh. Score. And uh, the fight is out of most people. Even the really mean one who always gets in everybody's stuff. She's not as chapped as usual and she's laying off the people who don't need to be picked on to begin with. Thank God I don't have to say anything today. Yeah. Maybe there are just fewer conflicts. And maybe, just maybe, day to day, uh, the workers begin to notice that the uh, produce is just a day or two fresher overall. It doesn't seem quite so rotten. Are we describing a miracle? Are we describing something that can't happen? What we're describing is something that is fixed, static, its own flavor of misery which is fed and feeds many in what gang? Misery. And it gets deliveries, you know, and the misery is kind of dependent on the deliveries, but kind of it's dependent on the people who unpack the deliveries and either don't look at what they've received until it's rotten, or who don't look the driver in the eye and say, listen, here, bub, I serve many. And I require fresh food for these people. I know you wouldn't be in this truck in a hundred degree weather unless it mattered to you. I'm wondering if we can come to an agreement about the quality of the food that I'm providing him. Kind of feeling sick of it, from, feel sick from it from time to time. I try to eat it. Last time I did that was last week, Bob. And I had diarrhea for three days. The food tasted off, but it tasted okay. So, you know, I'm not real sure. What do you suggest, Bob? And then, you know, Bob gets to say, well, I deliver for you. You'll take what I give you. Just for saying this, uh, you better make sure people use their stuff up right away. It's gonna be bad. Well then, is that someone who's going to be making more deliveries to Bob's food bank? Well, we would hope not. That's how the quality gets better. See that? And that's how the happiness factor is uh, increased with all the patrons. And, uh, and, and it begins to build on itself and people know because there's word of mouth and because it can, you can feed it from the other side of the street. That's a safe place. That's a place where I know a miracle's gonna happen for me. Oh, I always get a hit of hope when I'm there. Oh, they they help my friend. I heard about them. I wanna go there. And the more people come in, is there a sense of sacrifice and oh my god, and this is so hard? No, it's hey. The more people, the better I can negotiate with my delivery men. 
please come. And uh, you know, people who like to go, <laughs> you took two and you only need one. And the person on the receiving end gets to feel all those icky feelings with that woman. We don't know why, but she don't come around no more. It's weird. And the people who do show up, they're just, uh, they're just almost a different class of people. One brings a guitar, and the whole place sounds of beautiful music. It's very beautiful indeed. We tell you this story because, you know, it's a time of reaching out and giving to others, of realizing, looking down and looking around. Ooh, ooh, my pantry is full. Oh my. All this time I thought I was so broke. All this time I thought I was in bad shape, but look at me. Ooh, I probably could ask a couple people in to see if they want some of this good stuff because I have so much of it. Yes. It's funny how that happens. We started with telling you about the sandstorm. Isn't that pretty? What is the point of the sandstorm, remember? Well, it's that everything is a little bit, um, it's impossible to see at one point, it's thick. And then it begins to clear and you begin to see that there is movement, there is something going on. And it doesn't seem foreign or weird or alien, it just is, uh, you can't get a whole big picture. You really don't know what's going on, but you know that something good's going on. And then, the act is more. And you realize what, once was is no more. And uh, what is here is uh, phenomenal and requires no sacrifice. But it does require acknowledgement. And melding with. And enjoyment of. What's the point if it isn't fun, right? Okay, so we understand that this one has gone very far. We did the, we did this healing and then it uh, where there's more and there's more and there's more. And uh, no sense of true finality, but certainly a sense of peace that uh, does not have to be repeated through meditative processes and laws again. It can simply be remembered. That's awfully nice. What's easier than thinking about a big old whale who cannot help but talk to her sister and explain and go and guide and everything? And this whale has a beautiful, beautiful heart. There are many crystals in this one and many, many lives in this one. But look at that one. It's all lit up. And, but it's a scorpion body. But look, it's a sun. And it's in a whale. Ooh, that must be one big whale. Yes, we see that's, that's entirely true. She saw the beautiful face and she understand enough. She understand enough. And we give this to you as a gift because, you know, how many times do you get to hear about these kind of things, huh? Oh, all the time. Because I am a master and I have all kinds of visions all the time. But good. Why don't you drop this one a line? That would be nice. You could, you could compare notes. Do that. But if it's something that's not, it's not in your experience, then... We think it's kind of fun to listen in, and uh, and uh, so this meld. It is just a way to make the tube a beautiful place to play. So, we thank you for playing with us today. We wanted to clear the energy to go softer and pink now. So the whale is happy. <laughs> we wish you uh, peace and love harmony and joy. Say